So it's actually one of those days where I have not a lot going on and it's raining heavily right now. Um, you probably can't hear it because of noise cancellation, but uh, I am working on a project around batteries. Uh, so I thought I'll bring you in on it. And as the video title probably suggests, uh, I'm going to be doing some DIY electro plating. Now I'm shooting this entire thing on an iPhone 16e. I'm also going to be recording the audio on the 16e. So you'll also get a good idea of what the device is like as a sort of camera device or a vlogging device or whatever. So let's move into what we're actually doing and let me show you what I'm actually working on. So these are some copper bus bars that we got manufactured for the battery project. Now the problem with copper is, as you can see, that after some time it'll start to tarnish, get this oxidation layer on it. And I want to avoid that. So what I'm going to be doing um, is nickel plating these. And these are not the only ones I have. I have about 24 of those. And uh, we wanted to find uh, some good nickel plating. I couldn't really find a good guy to do it here. So we decided to do it ourselves. So we're going to be plating this with nickel and uh, we're going to be doing a complete DIY process. So if you want to do it, technically you can do it at home, but make sure you follow all sorts of safety precautions. So we actually did a test run of this yesterday and uh, everything is basically based on uh, this liquid. This is a nickel electro plating liquid that you can make yourself and I'll show you how I made this. And this juice looking thing that you absolutely do not want to drink is uh, what is it going to allow us to plate copper with nickel. I also picked up this power supply. Now this is a bench top sort of power supply. Uh, you don't really need this. You can use any 20 volt power supply like an old adapter from a laptop or something. But this allows me to really crank up the amps. So this goes up to 10 amps uh, and about 30 volts. So I can control that and it gives me a better sort of process for the entire thing uh, to coat it with nickel I couldn't really find nickel metal so I have these uh, nickel strips that are basically battery welding strips now they come in two types some are with iron and they have nickel on top of them uh, but you can get pure nickel strips as well so that's what I'm going to be using to sort of coat these bus bars or plate these bus bars to make this you don't need uh, vinegar and uh, I do have 15% concentration vinegar so the stronger the concentration the better and I'm going to use the same vinegar to sort of clean up uh, the copper also so remove some of this oxidation and I'm going to make a small batch of uh, the nickel plating liquid or solution in uh, this little glass over here, so just so that I can show you how I made this, and then we'll get on to the electroplating process. Now, if you're attempting to do this, you want to do this in a well ventilated area. And so, this room for us is fully ventilated, so you want to do it in a fully ventilated area and at least have exhaust fans on because uh, electroplating will give off some gases. Now what I have in here is just vinegar and I have two nickel strips, one connected to the anode and one connected to the cathode. So what happens is that ions, you know, positively charged ions from uh, the positive side will get attracted to the negatively charged ions from the negative side and basically fly through the vinegar, sort of turn into this. The liquid uh, will get some nickel dissolved in it and you'll get uh, this bright green or sort of bluish color. So right now we just have pure vinegar in there and if I turn on uh, the power supply you'll see that it is drawing about just one watt and almost no amps and that's because this is pure vinegar and we have some table salt over here and what you want to do is add some table salt to basically improve the conductivity of the vinegar. Now since we have a very small amount of vinegar here I'm just going to add a small amount of salt and basically dissolve it with this wooden spoon. And that should technically, in theory, improve the conductivity of this. Now let's see if it actually draws some amps. So you can see it's already drawing half an amp, which is fantastic. And you'll start to see bubbling. Uh, that means that uh, electrons are now flowing from the positive side to the negative side. And your anode is being sacrificed. So you'll start to see this strip sort of decay. So these are examples of some strips that I've used previously. You can see that they sort of start to decay and uh, sort of reduce. Uh, those are perfectly uh, squared off strips, but you can see that it is frothing quite a lot. And uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see actually the bubbles rising in there. And those sort of signify the fact that it is working. 
quite well. So what we want to do is let this run for a little bit uh, till it turns into something close to that. You can already see it's starting to get that color a little bit. And uh, yeah, so it should not take a lot of time. So it has been about a few minutes. I did add some more salt. So you can see that it is drawing like a full amp now. And you can see that it is uh, starting to get uh, the color uh, that we basically want. So I'm going to just pull this out. And uh, you can see that our anode has been sacrificed a little bit into uh, this. And you will see some deposition on uh, the cathode as well. So you'll see that uh, it does form a little bit of a layer there. So it has been depositing there. Uh, but so basically, if you run it with uh, the nickel strips, uh, you'll get uh, something like this. And this is basically what you need, a deeper version of this. So you let it run a little bit longer. It will turn into what I have over here, which is a highly saline nickel solution. So uh, let's quickly get it going. And uh, we do have uh, some copper soaking over there in vinegar. So what I want to do is sort of place this on one side of uh, the liquid over here. Now this is basically the setup we have over here. I have a copper tube, uh, which is connected to the negative and I have my nickel strips sort of sitting in here connected to the positive and I tried doing this with multiple bus bars yesterday and it doesn't work that well it works with a single one much better now this uh, this liquid has a lot of salt in it so we'll have better sort of results on this I'll crank this up to 5 amps and then you can see that the copper that is sitting in the vinegar is actually getting cleaned up quite nicely so it'll remove a lot of that oxidation that you see so we'll let that soak in. Uh, this one has been soaking for a bit and uh, now I've put it in uh, the liquid. So let's start this up and see how it looks like. Immediately you can see that uh, the chemical reaction is working. The bubbles are basically signifying the fact that it is. And we're getting about 100 watts. So it is taking all of those, almost all of those five amps. And that's because there's a lot of salt in this liquid. So it improves conductivity quite a lot. So we'll let this run for a few minutes and then see what it looks like. So it's been a few minutes, uh, we are still getting a good amount of wattage and the entirety of 5 amps. I want to pause this and see what uh, the bus bar is looking like. So I'll just pull this out and give it a quick wipe and you can see it's doing a fantastic job of plating it. I'm actually going to reverse this because this side has got a nice plate but this side has not. So I'm going to actually put it in like this now and uh, run it for another few minutes. So I've been running this for another couple of minutes and I can see that the wattage is dropping, which could signify that uh, more or less uh, it is complete. So let's take a look at what we have over here. So as you can see, both sides are now nicely nickel plated. So what I'm going to do is reverse this and get the other side as well. So I'm going to spend about three to four minutes on both sides to fully coat this in nickel. Uh, this is the process that's working really well. I could possibly get a taller container and dip the whole bus bar in it, but this doesn't seem to take too much time and we just have a few more to go through. So once I'm done with all of this, I'll show you what I'm doing next to the bus bar. Some of what you see floating around is the scum that is coming out of the nickel strips. So even though they say they're 100% pure, we do get some of this black scum in there. But so far so good, it seems to be working well. So we are basically done with this. So this one is more or less done. I do see some imperfections, so I may run it again once just to give it a nicer coat. Uh, but this is what we started with and this is what we have now. Uh, this didn't fully dip in as well on one side, so I will uh, give it a little bit of a dip more and then I'll show you what I'm doing to it finally. So that is looking much nicer, fully coated as well. And now I'm going to do the final step, which is add the heat shrink. And uh, since it is copper and it's going to get really hot really quickly, I'm going to use this plier to hold it. But this is what you want to do. 
We want to shrink the heat shrink. We need to change it the other side. So easily one of the more satisfying things to do. Uh, you can see the finished product looks very professional. We've got nickel plated copper bus bar with uh, insulation in the middle, which will be perfect for our upcoming battery project that we'll also have a video on. This is really hot. I'm gonna put it, ouch. So it's still hot, place it there. And I'll also show you a bigger version of uh, the bus bar that we made yesterday now in this i've only plated this part and uh, this part of uh, the copper and the rest has just been uh, like covered with heat shrink so this will be on the positive terminal and these will be the interconnects between the batteries and uh, then we'll have some for the negative terminals as well so we'll show you what the usage is but this video sort of demonstrates how we've uh, plated and uh, the heat shrink will also protect the nickel but more importantly the nickel will protect the copper which is fantastic now i just have to do this one million times more so uh, we managed to finish everything off and this is what it's looking like i am actually really pleased with the overall result i have lost my voice a little bit so bear with me so these are uh, the negative connects uh, you can see and then these are all the interconnects. So I did try polishing this one off only in this little area, only for a little bit. And you can see it gets a little bit of a shine, which means that if you were inclined and if you had the time and uh, basically the inclination, uh, then you could polish this off to a mirror finish to give it an even more professional look. But I'm quite happy with what this is. It is solving my purpose. And uh, we went from this to this, to this finished product, which I am really pleased with. So there was it, uh, the outcome came out really nice. I did not expect it to look that good. It looks fairly professional and it'll do a job and it'll protect the copper for a fairly long time. Now I can continue plating it for a while to get a thicker coat, but I think this will suffice for what we need it for. And because the copper bus bar is really thick in itself, I don't think it's going to lose conductivity anytime soon. What do you think of the process? I'll have some of the stuff listed below, but if you need anything specific, let me know and I'll try and help you out with that. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already part of Team iGAN. I have a lot of DIY stuff going on and uh, the battery project is going to come up possibly later in the week. So I'll show you what the whole bus pass stuff is all about as well. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next one.